Hi, in today's video, I am going to show you the final step of our brain patch flattening pipeline. You might remember that at the beginning of the tutorials, we have looked at LN2 layers program of Laney, which was computing the cortical depths. Then we had a look at the LN2 multilaterate program, which was computing the U and the V coordinates that are orthogonal to the depth, so that they summarize the gray matter as a cortical surface. And what we finally want to do is to transform this folded cortical chunk into a flat one. And today, with LN2 patch flatten, I am going to show you exactly this step, which uses the coordinates U, V, and D for depth, and transforms a cortical folded brain chunk into a flat representation. First, let's remember our inputs. Here, I have an MRI image that is around 0.2 mm isotropic resolution. I have cut out the region around Heschel's gyrus. That is my region of interest for this tutorial. So for LN2 patch flatten program, we are going to use the following inputs. First, the curvature image that is bent into two curvatures. This is computed from LN2 layers. Here you can see that the gyrus is labeled with one number, that is two and the sulcus is labeled with another number, that is 1. Then, for LN2 patch flatten, we are going to use for our depth coordinates the metric output of the LN2 layers. And in this output, for each gray matter voxel, we had a normalized cortical depth measurement. You can see that the values are ranging from 1 towards the outer gray matter surface to 0 towards the white matter gray matter interface. Next, you can remember that we have computed from LN2 multilaterate program the U and V coordinates that are orthogonal to the cortical depth coordinate. So here you can see that for a disk radius of I think here 10 millimeters, we have computed U and V coordinates. And the other coordinate is available as the second component in our multidimensional nifty file and finally for ln2 patch flatten we are going to use the perimeter chunk output from ln2 multilaterate and you can remember that this was a file that was denoting our disk okay now let's go to ln2 patch flatten so in the help menu all these options are explained but quickly, here I am going to show you how to use it. So the first input we are going to give is called values. This is a nifty file that will be projected into a new flat image. And just for this example, I am going to show you the flat version of this curvature file because it's like easy to understand and what most people are used to seeing. Next, I have the chord UV input. For this, I am going to use the UV coordinates that I have computed from ln2 multilaterate and then I have chord D which is the depth coordinate that is computed by ln2 layers I'm going to take the metric equidist output for this example next I have the domain input and that's a special input to constrain our flattening to a nice radial chunk of gray matter I'm going to use the perimeter chunk file that is computed by ln2 multilaterate. These are all our nifty inputs. Next, we are going to determine the number of voxels that we are going to have for the flat representation of our brain chunk. And for this, we have three parameters here. That's called bins, U, V, and D. And I think once we run the program, it will be clear what this parameter means. First one, let's give it 40 or 20, it's easier to count. Pins V, 20, pins D, let's give it 11. Okay, now let's run our program. In seconds it has finished, so this is quite a fast operation. And now let's inspect our output. You can see that the new output is generated, called 
whatever I give as an NFT file to my values input, which was curvature bin. So now it's got curvature bin flat and it's called 20 by 20 to represent the flat dimensions of my file. Here you can see that I have a new nifty file that has 20 voxels in X, 20 voxels in Y and 11 voxels. You can see it from here. 11 voxels in depth. And you can see that this is my curvature projected. The gyrus and the sulcus. That's all for today. Thank you.